Good morning, viewers. Welcome again to my channel, Second Matter, the solution to your math problems. This is WASI 2025 Core Math for Private Candidates. So, this is question 13. Let's begin with the A. So, in a diagram, PQRS is a cyclic bilateral with line RQ reduced to T. So, line RQ, this is straight line, so it extends to point T. Now, oh, angle PQT, angle PQT. So the whole of this angle measures 95 degrees. Again, angle SQR, angle SQR. So this angle measures 37 degrees. Then finally, angle PSQ, angle PSQ measures 64 degrees we have to calculate i angle s r q so where is angle s r q angle s r q s r q so we are looking at this angle the measure of this angle but before uh, we get the measure of angle s r q first of all let's i want us to find the value of this angle I'm naming this angle as angle E. Remember that we have a straight line. And then angles on a straight line sum up to 180 degrees. So 95 plus E plus 37 must be equal to 180 degrees. Because we know that angles on a straight line. Sum up to 180 degrees. So let's make it a subject. So A is equal to 180 minus 95 minus 37. So what is the measure of angle A? 180 minus 95. Minus thirty seven. <clears throat> that is forty eight degrees. So angle A measures forty eight degrees. So now I'm naming this angle here as B, and then this angle as C. Okay, so what is the relationship between angle A and angle C? Remember that there is a property in circuit theorem that says that the angles a chord, so we have a chord called PS, subtending two angles, so one at angle C, and then one at angle A. What is the relationship between angle A and angle C? They are equal. Yes, they are equal. But the property says that the angles a chord or an arc subtends at the circumference in the same segment are equal. So because of this, angle A has the same measure as angle C. So we can say that angle C is equal to angle A. Why? Because your angles in the same segment so because of this property angles in the same segment so the angles a chord certain at the circumference in the same segment are equal so what is the value of angle a so angle a is 48 Degrees. Now again, what is the relationship between sixty four degrees and angle B? Sixty four degrees and angle B. You also see that 
angle B must also be equal to 64 degrees wide because of the same property. We have a chord called PQ. So this chord is subtending two angles at a circumference. So one at the 64 degrees and the other at angle B. So the angles the chord subtends at the circumference in the same segment are equal. So because of the same property, angles in the same segments are equal because of this property. So we can say that B is equal to 64 degrees. So with this, can we calculate um, angle S R Q? Yes, we can do that because angle S R Q is the sum of angle B and then angle C. So angle S R Q is equal to B plus what plus C. So angle S R Q is equal to what the measure of angle B sixty four degrees, and then the measure of angle C that is forty eight degrees. So finally, angle S R Q is equal to so sixty four plus 48 we have 112 degrees 112 degrees so that is for the i now i i we are also supposed to find the measure of angle qps so where is angle qps q p s q p s we are looking at this angle so from this particular triangle we want the measure of this angle so now i'm naming uh, angle qps as um t as t so we see that from this particular triangle so i i From this triangle, from triangle QPS, QPS. What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? So, from this triangle QPS, this triangle, angle A plus D plus sixty-four must be equal to 180 degrees because the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees what is the value of a so the value of a so the value of a was the same as that of c so a is also 48 degrees now we don't know the value of d so we have 64 must be equal to 8, 180. Let's make D the subject. So D is equal to 180 minus 48 minus 64. So let's see what we will get. 180 minus 48 minus 64. We have 68 degrees but remember we are not asked to find angle d we have to find angle q p s so angle q p s is just 68 degrees and the last one i i i we are also to find the measure of angle q p r angle q p r so also from this triangle that is from triangle q 
P R. So from this triangle, triangle Q P R. Q P R. But remember, we are supposed to find the measure of angle Q P R. So let's identify angle Q P R. Q P R. We are looking at this small angle here. Q P R. So this small angle. I'm naming the angle as E. So also remember that we also have a triangle. So angle B plus 37 plus A plus E must also be equal to 180 degrees. So we can say that from this particular triangle, angle E plus A plus 37 plus B must also be equal to 180 degrees. We don't know the value of E, but we know the value of A as 48 our 37 and what is the value of angle B? Angle B measures 64. So this must be equal to 180. So let's make E the subject. We have 180 minus 48 minus 37 minus 64. So what is E? 180 minus 48 minus 37 minus 64 we have 31 degrees so therefore we can say that angle q p r measures 31 Degrees. So that is for the A part. Also the B. If log A is 2, log B is giving us the A, and log C is giving us negative 1, we have to evaluate the square root of log, and then the expression for the number is A Q B all on C squared. Now recall from indices that the square root of a number is the same as the number exponents have. So we are going to change the square root sign into an index. So we have log So we're going to have an index of 1 on 2. Also recall from the third law of logarithm that log to the base of x exponent n is the same as n log to the base a of x so we have log to the base of a and then the number is x but this x has an index of n another way of rewriting this is by bringing the index in front of the log expression so we can bring the index in front of the log expression So now, the next step, we have our half, we are going to use the log to expand the expression for the number. So we have log a cube plus log b minus log c squared why why is it so yes we did this by applying the first and second laws of logarithms recall from the first law that so we have a log with the same basis but i want i want us to write it as a single log what do you do you write the log to the base a and then we multiply the numbers so this time we have this we have the expression for the right hand side we want to split them apart so anytime they are multiplying it means that they were added 
So that is the reason why we added the two. Again, from the second law. So law to the same base, but this time the numbers are subtracting. How do we write this as a single log? So we write log to the base A, then we divide the numbers. So subtraction goes with division. You see that the numerator divided by the denominator, which is C squared. So when we expand, it will become minus. So now the next step. This is what we want. We want an expression for log A. We have we want an expression for log B as well as an expression for log C. We have the expression for log B. But here we are having log A cube. So it means that we need to do away with the cube. Again, we also need to do away with the square. So how do we do that? So from the third log. You can bring the index in front of the log expression. Here, yeah, there is no index, so you can also bring the index in front of the log expression. So now we have log A, log B, and then our log C. So we just do our substitution. Anywhere we see log A, we substitute to. Anywhere we see log B, we substitute 3. Anywhere we see log C, negative 4. So let's do that. We have 3. What is the value of log A? Log A is 2. What is log B? We have 3. And then what is log C? Log C is minus 1. So let's simplify. Then multiply by 2, that is 6. Plus 3. Then minus 2, multiplying minus 1. That is also plus 2. So we have half. 6 plus 3, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. So half of... 11 that is 11 on 2 so we can also change it to decimals we have 5 point 5 or we can also have two mix fraction 5 whole number 1 on two. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, comment, and share the video. See you next time.